What's up? What's happening? It's here last. The first Friday night hits of the high school football season. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. The joy is in the journey, but everyone wants the destination to look like it did for Abbeville and Christchurch, the two champions from the upstate last December. Two teams with title aspirations meeting in Greenville tonight, where the Greenville Red Raiders hosted Dorman in our Sparrow Financial Game of the Week. Julie Morse at Serene Stadium. For the second year in a row, Greenville and Dorman faced off to start the season. The Cavaliers won last year's matchup by 25 points. This year, Dorman has a new head coach. Jake Morris replaces Dustin Curtis, who resigned earlier this year, while Greenville has a few familiar faces back, including wide receiver Mazio Bennett, who's committed to South Carolina. First quarter, what a play by Greenville to get the scoring started. Red Raiders block the Dorman punt, and Daylon Johnson recovers it in the end zone. Greenville's up 7-0 just a few minutes in. Still 7-0 late in the second quarter. On third and long, Greenville quarterback Bryson Drummond hits Bennett for a short pass, then watch Bennett go to work. He shreds the Dorman defense and finds his way into the end zone for a 27-yard touchdown. Red Raiders up 14 after the extra point. Dorman needing a spark before the break, and the Cavaliers get one here. David Sorensen connects with Brandon Teamer for the touchdown. Dorman's within eight. But in the final two minutes, Greenville's offense rolling again. Cy Teasley dancing down the sidelines for a score. Red Raiders up 21 to six. That's the score at halftime. Dorman does pull within seven in the fourth, but Bennett comes up big again. That's a 35 yard touchdown catch to extend Greenville's lead. The Red Raiders win it 34 to 21. We put a lot of time to prepare for this game. It took a whole year for us to be able to be back in this position. We will enjoy it tonight and use this as a building block as we prepare for the next game. Dorman plays North Augusta at home next week. Greenville takes on TL Hanna. At Serene Stadium, I'm Julia Morris, WYFF News 4 Sports. Julia, thank you. The Powdersville Patriots reveled in new heights last season, reaching the 3A state championship for the first time before falling to Beaufort in the title game. That loss fueling their fire as they open up at home against Broome. A rematch of last year's opener here as well. The Pats won that game by 24. But these Centurions ready to make some noise this fall. Powdersville trailing by a touchdown in the second quarter. Eli Hudgens to Elijah Huggins, twice as nice for a chunk gainer right there, but Hudgens would throw a pick later in the drive and Broom, well, here we go, Hudgens looking back to pass, trying to find his guy, trying to find his guy. Instead, he is going to throw an interception as Broom comes up with the big defensive turnover right there and the Centurions would throw the next punch as well. Kamaje Bracket Brand in the QB, but with speed like this, you gotta let it rip. He's got a resi for six, and Broom goes up by 14, and they stun Powdersville here, 22 to 21. Big win for the Centurions on opening night. A new dawn for the Daniel Lions starting over after their 36 game win streak was snapped last year, traveling to Greer and wasting no time. These Lions were not. Near midfield, Daniels Jakari Bennett sees the crease, takes it all the way inside the 10. He does all that to get it down there and on the doorstep like Amazon, he delivers the first touchdown of Daniel's season. A couple of possessions later, it is still 7-0 Daniel. New QB for the Lions, Colton Chapman, finds his guy, Bennett in the flat. Another one, Daniel takes the two-score lead, and they beat up on Greer, opening night 48-20. Till Hanna loaded with upperclassmen and experience. 16 starters back from last year's 10-win team went away as to Boyung Springs for tonight's opener. Bulldog students, well, you better believe they're all right up and they got the branding right there. Thank you, fellas. We appreciate that. Boyung Springs up 6-0. Quarterback Lincoln Husky connects with Kyle Patterson, who makes a diving catch in the corner to put Boiling Springs ahead 13 to nothing. So how about the Bulldogs showing some spark early? But T.L. Hanna responds immediately. Katie Patterson gets loose for a 50-yard touchdown that cuts the Boiling Springs lead to 13-7. And from there, you know T.L. Hanna, well, they got their thing going on and they get rolling here and they would end up taking this game against the very game Boiling Springs squad, 34-26 the final as the Yellow Jackets get the win. 
Abbeville ended last year on an 11-game win streak, claiming their 12th state championship in doing so, hosting McCormick in their season opener. Scoreless in the first, scoreless no more. Carden Norman, 40-yard touchdown, Abbeville, 7-0 early. And the Panthers are just getting started. That's Kendall Cole from down in close. And another touchdown for Abbeville. Their title defense off to a sterling start. 65 to 12 over McCormick. Eyes on the sky, our chopper over Woodmont where the Cats hosting Palmetto. Wildcats in the red zone. Jordan Sink finds his main man, Trey Broughton. He knows what to do with it. Brought the hammer, touchdown Woodmont. They'd go for two and get it later in the quarter. Still 8-0. Look at Ezekiel Belcher. Ducks, sheds, see ya. Running like people are chasing him. 70 yards for another Woodmont score. Palmetto would keep things in striking distance here, but the Wildcats hang on for the 28-13 win. Spartanburg reloading for another playoff push. The Vikes at home tonight against South Point from up in Rock Hill. Picking it up in the second half. South Point up 10-0. Third quarter, that was Tamaje Johnson with a quick pass to Justin Rice for the leaping touchdown. South Point still leads 10-7, however. Fourth quarter, the Stallions have kicked a couple field goals. They're up 16-7, but Spartanburg blocks the punt, and they take it in. Christian Roberts returns the punt for the Spartanburg touchdown, makes it 16-14. And yeah, you better do some push-ups for that. Fourth quarter, Spartanburg's last play, but they cannot complete their comeback. South Point hangs on, and they win 16-14. to The Brex Lone era underway at Woodruff. The new Wolverines head coach facing his alma mater, the Chapman Panthers, tied at 22 in the second. That's Chapman's Matthias Scott. Touchdown, Panthers. They go up by 7, 29, 22 Chapman at that point. Coleman Gray for Chapman. He's trying to make something happen. Instead, he is picked off by Woodruff's, Woodruff's Michael Horton. That sets up the Wolverines. TJ Morris on fourth down over the top to Nick McConnell. That's going to pull Woodruff within a point, but Chapman pulls away late, 57 to 34, the final. Just a brief break for a quick timeout. Plenty of football ahead, but first, if you've been with us before, you know the drill. It's mic'd up tonight with Riverside head coach Matt Rochester. Kickoff return! Kickoff return! That receiver's moving early. Hey, look good snap, just a little bit, just try to get a little bit faster. I got two on. Two off. He got you back, baby. He got you back. Is the lure one really wide? Yeah. No, you just take the first two. Just take the first two, okay? That's all I need from you. Good job. That's all I need from you. Keep balling, baby. We ain't stopping. We ain't stopping. I promise you, we not stopping.